All right, so we have told you the theory suggesting the Long Island serial killer and the eastbound strangler were the same person. But this week, authorities said those sex worker killings in New York and New Jersey are apparently unrelated. But farther south, straight down I-95, lies the killing grounds where another four women uh, were, were murdered. And those murders, too, were once seen as potentially linked to the murders of Gilgo Beach. In late 2005 and early 2006, the bodies of Laquia Gunther, Julie Green, and Iwana Patton were found dumped in desolate areas around Daytona Beach, Florida. Each was partially naked and shot in the head with a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson handgun. All had also been sex workers. Police formed a task force to find what media were calling the Daytona Beach killer and followed hundreds of leads, but the case ended up going cold for eight years until March of 2016, when a road crew worker found the naked body of a sex worker named Rachel Bay on the Beeline Highway. Bay had been beaten, strangled, and sexually assaulted. She wasn't shot in the head like the others, but DNA left on her body matched DNA from the bodies found almost a decade before. DNA is an amazing thing. More than three years after that, in September 2019, police matched the victim's DNA with a cigarette tossed in a trash can by Robert Hayes, a former criminal justice major and cheerleader at Bethune-Cookman University in Daytona Beach. Hayes was charged, convicted, and sentenced to three consecutive life sentences for the first uh, three murders and is still awaiting trial for the fourth. Volusia County Sheriff Mike Chitwood was the instrumental uh, in putting Hayes behind bars. He spoke with us about how police finally tracked Hayes down and the change in Hayes' method of killing over the years. He was a criminal justice major at Bethune-Cookman University, and I think he really studied what he did. He followed what was going on in the media. Uh, so the first three victims, he used a very unique firearm. It was a Smith & Wesson. And the first three victims were connected with DNA or ballistics. We actually were qu questioned him shortly after we were able to trace where those guns were sold. Uh, and he claimed he gave it to his mother for a gift. And no nobody followed up on it. This was long before I was the chief. And then the case went dormant. Do we know why he took a 13-year break, basically? That that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know if he actually took a break. I think what he did was he changed his modus operandi. He went from using the significant firearm and not using protection to, when you look at the murder where he gets caught, there's no DNA, there's no firearm, but the DNA that they do get is from her fighting for her life where she probably scratched his face or scratched uh. him. That's where that DNA came from. So he, he completely went from unprotected sex and leaving a specimen and a firearm to strangulation uh, and and no, you know, making sure he wore protection when he, when he involved himself. Did we ever figure out why Hayes was targeting sex workers? Because I find it interesting that's not totally uncommon um, you know, in Long Island, it's all sex workers with, with Hayes, Daytona Beach sex workers. D did he ever say, do we know why specifically it was them that he was going after? He never spoke. He never spoke at all to investigators. The only emotion that he showed when he was in on trial down in Palm Beach County, Florida, they showed a picture of his daughter during the trial and he had to be restrained. He became so physically angry that his daughter was being brought into that. Other than that, he showed zero remorse, didn't speak to any families, didn't make any type of a statement whatsoever. Obviously, we're interested based on what happened in, um, in, in Long Island with the Gilgo Beach murders. You know, they've, they found the victims there wrapped in, in burlap. There are still seven others uh, that they haven't officially connected to the suspect there, Rex Hureman. What do you think based on what you know about these kinds of cases? I mean, do you think they're gonna end up making that connection? I think sooner or later they will. Clearly, he's not going to cooperate with them. You would hope that the overwhelming uh, evidence is so overwhelming that there'll be a point in time where he says, okay, I need to come clean with you and give closure to these families. But again, you're dealing with somebody who has no empathy whatsoever. And from everything I've read, he was hiding in plain sight. You know, there were clues there that were missed that unfortunately every investigation, even with the Daytona Beach serial killer, they had this guy in, in, in a room questioning him about that unique firearm that he purchased. And the reason they let him go and didn't follow up on it was the profiler said we were looking for a white male, mm. not a black male. 
and that excluded that. And lo and behold, here you get 13 years later when you arrest the guy, the guy turned out to be a black male who was a college student not that far from where all these women disappeared and were found. Interesting. I guess it shows that even if you have a profile uh, when you're working these cases, I guess you do need to maintain an open mind. You can't just narrow the possibilities down to just the, the kind of person that you think it is. Exactly. I think people get wrapped up, even cops get wrapped up into the profiler show and they study all these things and they're going to give you all these characteristics. Really, if you look at the serial killers throughout history who have been profiled, there's about 50% of the things that are right in there. And the purpose of the profile is to help you when you're questioning the suspect, understand their background, understand their religious belief, understand their family upbringing, you know, and things like that. It's not to point out and say, hey, we're specifically looking for this kind of person. Very interesting. Our thanks uh, to Sheriff Mike Chitwood for that. It was just a matter of time. Uh, for them, and then they were finally able to uh, to catch that guy. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.